Hello and welcome to the Comic Cave. I'm Ramsey, aka Captain Away, and today I'm looking at the collection for the 2011 event story, War of the Green Lanterns. It's all about Hal Effin Jordan. I mean, it makes sense. He was the first. Well, okay, technically the first was a guy named Alan Scott, but he's been canonically separated from this whole mess, so we're not talking about him today. We're talking about Hal F. and Jordan, because he was the first to bring us the Green Lantern Corps, a group of space cops based on the planet Oa who patrol the universe for its own safety and were established and led by the Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, uh, sorry, Guardians of the Universe. That's like, you know, the next level up. I guess. Other Green Lantern copies would come in Jon Stewart, Guy Gardner, and Kyle Rayner, and though they would all be important to varying degrees, Hal would remain top dog and be considered the best through it all. Until the villains Mogul and Cyborg Superman blew up Hal's home of Co City, wiping it from the map and leaving Hal to become a supervillain named Parallax eventually leading to his death when he sacrificed himself to reignite the sun. But writer Jeff Johns was unhappy with Hal's fate from glory and desired to bring him back as the main and greatest Green Lantern of all. So it was re-established that Parallax was instead a parasitic entity made of fear, as old as the universe itself, and was once trapped inside the main green power battery on the planet Oa. As time passed, it was forgotten Parallax existed, and it instead became known as the Yellow Impurity inside the battery. That Yellow Impurity has been with the series since the very beginning, since Abin Sur first gave his ring to Hal Jordan in the pages of Showcase issue number 22. And apparently was the reason that the color yellow was a weakness for the Green Lanterns for most of that history. From this concept further spread the idea of an entire color spectrum of emotion. And that would lead to stories introducing further Lantern cores like we would see shortly after Hal came back to life in Green Lantern Rebirth. In stories such as the Sinestro Core War, and ones that I've already covered on this channel like Blackest Night and Brightest Day. The fallout from those stories would lead us directly into the final pre-Flashpoint Green Lantern event story, the one we're looking at today. War of the Green Lanterns. So let's all shout our lantern oaths and take this away. The comic opens on a flashback, in one hell of a flashback at that, taking us to one billion years ago on the planet Maltus. As we meet up with this guy named Krona as he attempts to perform his illegal experiments only to be stopped by the Guardians of the Universe. For those unaware, this guy Krona here was attempting to view the beginning of the universe with the aid of some kind of time viewer thing, I guess. But worried about the dangers interfering with creation could present, such experiments had been outlawed on Maltus, and apparently with good reason because as we learn throughout the history of DC, this interference would cause the universe to split into an endless multiverse and also create the evil antimatter universe, and that would also create the mo effin anti-monitor, yo, which would then also lead to Crisis on Infinite Earths, the major event story that has basically been the driving force behind everything else that has happened to the DC universe for the past 20 years leading up to this point. So, you know, kind of important stuff here. Also, I should mention that the Guardians are wearing the White Lantern logo here, instead of their usual green emblem, probably to further indicate that this is those early days when they had only just first given up their emotions in order to better serve as protectors of the universe. And with the Guardians is the Manhunters, a group of unfeeling robots that were the first attempt by the Guardians to establish a universe-wide peacekeeping force that would backfire horribly on them when, in order to better keep the peace, they ended up mass occurring basically the entire population of Space Sector 666. The only survivor of that massacre is Atrocitus, leader of the Red Lanterns, which has prompted his rage for revenge against the Guardians that led to him establishing his Red Lantern Corps. Whew, okay, good with all this establishing stuff? Great. Then let's jump back to the future to Hal F. and Jordan who's currently in trouble with the Guardians as they're sick of his insubordination, especially because right now he's palling around with the new Guardians, a group made up of the leaders of each of the Lantern Colors. This beautiful rainbow coalition is chasing after, who else, 
Krona, because apparently he's captured each of the living embodiments of emotion and color. You know, like Parallax, only there's one for each color. We saw them some in the Black Lantern tie-ins, but they're actually all named for us here, which is kinda cool. But what isn't kinda cool is that Krona currently has them all under his control. So these Lantern leaders join with Hal and his longtime love interest Carol Ferris, representing the Star Sapphires, to hunt Krona down so they can each get their entities back. What they find instead is the Book of the Black, a Black Lantern equivalent to the Book of Oa. And that book was a thing that was supposed to tell the history of the Green Lanterns. This book, instead, was a prophecy of sorts for the Blackest Night, but also contained some hidden information that the Guardians didn't want people to know about. And we're immediately hit with some of that information to again travel back into the long ago past to once more see Krona as a younger man. Younger... Guardian man? Guardian? You know what I mean. At this past point, he had apparently built some sort of gauntlet in Ghostbusters' backpack that lets him harness green energy. Uh, green emotional energy, not like green en You know what I mean. And he's currently being chased down by the Manhunters. With that green gauntlet, though, he manages to overpower them and then from there, reprograms them, causing them to go on the murder spree that killed all of Atrocitus' people. Krona would later be captured by the Guardians, where he would reveal that he changed the Manhunter's programming because he was just trying to point out the flaw in an emotionless police force. So between that and the gauntlet that they take from him, the Guardians would develop a new police force based around the Green Lantern energy. Krona would even give them the start of their new loyalty oath. Man, Krona really did all the work. No wonder he's pissed. These revelations, especially that it's actually Krona behind the murder of Atrocitus' people, are pretty major, but the group doesn't get much time to focus on that because from out of the Book of the Black pops its keeper, Lissa Drac. In her skimpiest swimsuit, too, I see. Because heaven forbid women serve a purpose outside of being sex objects, am I right? Drac had been an early recruit into the Sinestro Corps, but she only really cared about knowledge and books, even becoming the keeper of the Sinestro equivalent of the Book of Oa and the Book of the Black. And so fittingly, when she found the Book of the Black on Oa, she became obsessed with it and became its new keeper. Which is why they find her here, cause I guess she's been, like, staying inside the book? She's, like, really into books. But being a bookworm is a lonely life, so she invites all the lanterns to stay with her and starts trying to trap them all inside the book with her. Only Hal manages to escape because Sinestro forces him to combine their ring powers, creating an explosion that knocks Hal loose, along with all the color rings, though not their guardians. Hal is then confronted by members of the Green Lantern Corps who were coming to arrest him by order of the Guardians. But it seems that this was kind of a bad time. Because, as it turns out, Krona hadn't been on the run at all. He brought the Emotion Entities straight to Oa, where he merged all but Parallax into the Guardians, and then sent the Fear Entity to take his place back inside the main Green Power Battery, restoring the weakness to Fear. This causes the various members of the Green Lantern Corps all across the universe to fall under Krona's power, with the exception of Kyle, John, Guy, Kilowog, and, of course, Hal, who instead just see a vision of the entity and hear the words, Impurity Restored. This resistance is due to each of them having, in some form or another, served as a sort of host for Parallax, most of which happened back in Green Lantern Rebirth, but we don't really need to go into that here. But despite not being under Krona's control, they do all start fighting each other. Rainer, for example, attempts to follow his girlfriend, Soren Ignatu, who immediately flies off for Oa once she's under control. And Kyle is completely overcome by the fear of another girlfriend dying. I mean, fair. This would be what, the fourth? Seriously, girls, do not date this guy. Seriously. Seriously. John tries to stop him because he's grabbed by fear of losing his squad because of one person flying off the handle and... Wow, yeah. Raynor totally would be the Leroy Jenkins of the Green Lanterns. Now that you mention it, that's totally who he is. Caught between these opposing fears, John and Kyle start fighting, and their battle gets so heated that Ganthet, the last remaining guardian to have emotion, is forced to use the Green Lantern Ring he'd recently created for himself to try to both resist Krona's control and forcibly remove Kyle's and John's rings. 
That effort proves to be so much that Gan Fatan literally explodes. Well, okay, it was the ring that exploded, but it took the Guardian's hand with it, so same effect. With their rings off, Kyle and John are free from Krona's influence and calm down. But they're only given a moment before the Green Lantern Corps barrels down on their heads and Ganthid sacrifices himself as bait so the two humans can hide away in the tunnels beneath Oa. Guy and Kilowog, meanwhile, face a similar situation as they're also attacked by a large number of controlled Green Lanterns, and Kilowog lets himself be the focus of their attack so that Guy can escape. Assuming there must be others not under control, Guy puts out a call to his fellow Green Lanterns, finding only Hal answering. As Hal had just escaped himself from those Lanterns that had shown up to arrest him, but like all the others, had ended up being controlled, and he'd taken the Rainbow Rings and booked it out of there. The two meet up at The Green Room, their super cutesy nickname for the planet that young Kirk and old Spock got left on, and is also a secret meeting place for them to go whenever the shit hits the fan and Oa is compromised. So, you know, good thing that they had that ready. When Guy and Hal meet up, they also start fighting, both essentially afraid that they're a pointless character when the other one exists. But they too eventually realize the rings are corrupting them and they need to get them off. Oh, uh, wow, that, that sounded really bad. Let, let, me, let me try that again. And they needed to remove them. That's a little better. Which is supposed to be a big moment because I guess they're kind of suggesting that Hal hasn't removed his ring since coming back from the dead or something, much the way that Barry Allen hadn't really sat down ever since coming back from the dead until he finally did in Blackest Night. But also, like, so? It doesn't really feel that impactful, and you can only really use the same character moment so many times before it, you know, loses what little impact it had to begin with. At the greenhouse is a hangar with an alien ship that they just immediately fly to Oa without deciding what their goal is or making any kind of plan first. Making all of the stuff that just happened feel like a kind of pointless aside, but uh, whatever, I guess. When they get planet side, they discover Krona has managed to gain control over Kilowog after all, so they're forced to immediately abandon ship in an escape pod that brings them directly to John and Kyle. Guess those two weren't really trying that hard to hide. Unable to wear their green rings, but needing power rings to fight, Hal offers everyone one of the rainbow rings he collected earlier. So Guy, having once been a Red Lantern, gears up in red, Kyle chooses hope, and John chooses compassion, while Hal, of course, wears yellow. And then we get this super awesome shot of them all powering up. Yeah. Cool. Uh, you do realize, Hal, that uh, Krona can't hear you? Only your fellow core members there can, and they probably think you're a little weird for talking to someone who, you know, isn't there. Just, uh, just a thought. And it's also a bit ruined by the fact that immediately after this, we see that while Hal and Guy are fine since they have experience with their rings, John and Kyle aren't able to do much with their rings. In fact, when they're then immediately attacked by Green Lanterns, Kyle's blue ring just ends up boosting those green ring's powers, since really that's what the blue rings are designed to do. So at a loss for what to do, they all simply escape back into the tunnels to try and regroup and come up with an actual plan. Because yeah, maybe flying straight into the jaws of the enemy while they're at their most powerful without any sort of plan whatsoever wasn't the best idea, Hal. Why'd you do that, Hal? You know what? I take it back. Hal Jordan is definitely the Leroy Jenkins of the group. There. I said it. You know it's true. You'll never be able to unthink it. Below where the central power battery would be, the four dudes find a secret archive of the Guardians, including Krona's old gauntlet and backpack, the foundry where green rings and their lanterns are forged, and a friend and loyal servant of the lanterns named Shed. Aw, he's like their Alfred. Guy takes the gauntlet and backpack, and Shed takes them to a screen that shows them Mogo, the giant living planet that is a member of the Green Lantern Corps. You might remember him from my Blackest Night tie-in videos where he literally swallowed all of the Black Lanterns on Oa and burned them away inside his core. And yeah, he's apparently a he even though he's a planet. I'm not sure if that's just, you know, misogynistic normative assumption or there's actually some confirmation that Mogo's a he or what. I mean, Mogo does talk telepathically, but maybe nobody's just ever asked. 
Maybe Mogo's actually non-binary, or gender fluid, or has no concept of gender whatsoever, or even is a she that we just can't sexualize. Can you even imagine? How does that work? Anyway, Mogo is the one responsible for seeking out and finding Green Lantern replacements whenever one of them dies. And now that it slash they has been corrupted by Krona, he slash she is sending out thousands of rings all across the universe so that Krona can grow his own personal army of completely controlled Green Lanterns. John and Kyle feel that it's necessary to stop Mogo before anything else, while Guy and Hal want to get to the main lantern battery and remove Parallax so that the core are no longer being controlled. But since the Indigo Ring can teleport, John and Kyle are just like, see ya, and bamf out of there and up to Mogo. They first try to stop the parade of rings flying from the planet, but unable to do that, they instead head deep into the core of the planet. That's, uh... That's the C-O-R-E core and not the C-O-R-P-S core. Words are dumb. What they find is that Mogo's C-O-R-E core is just one giant Moef in green ring. Kyle attempts to use his blue power to cleanse Mogo's thoughts, but they learn that not only is Chrono's yellow corruption affecting Mogo, but so is the black. Seems all those black lanterns he slash they ate earlier didn't digest well. It's like I always tell my dog, this is why you don't eat things off the ground. She never listens either. With corrupted Green Lanterns barreling down toward them and too much corruption inside of Mogo for them to deal with, John uses his Indigo's Ring ability to channel other colors to suck up some of that yucky black stuff and then blows Mogo up. What the shit, John? What the shit? Really? After all of that emo pouting over Zanchi, a planet whose death you were only tangentially responsible for, and now you straight up blow up a planet yourself? And Mogo of all planets? Man, that's messed up. Down below on Oa, Hal and Guy had attempted to pull Parallax out of the main battery, only to be stopped by the entity possessed Guardians and captured. But when Mogo dies, it sends a psychic shockwave through Krona and all his controlled lanterns that gives Hal and Guy the chance to try again, with Kyle and John helping them this time. That again fails, so Ganthet has Hal add the orange ring to his other hand and Guy adds the sapphire ring to become both love and hate. They still don't quite manage to pull Parallax from the battery though before the Green Lanterns recover and attack. So Kyle, Hal, and John all defend Guy while he dives deep into what he really loves and hates, which is apparently the Green Lantern core for the first one and being full of rage for the second. Guy is, um, a simple, uh, guy. But that's enough because really diving into those emotions lets him pull Parallax out of the battery finally, giving everyone the chance to recover. Now free from Krona's control, they're able to turn their attention to the Renegade Guardian while the humans all drop their borrowed rings and take back up being green. And since red rings replaced her heart, Kyle is thankfully first able to use his blue power to heal Guy and let him lose the red ring. For some backup, Hal has Kyle draw in the Book of the Black, which Krona brought to Oa. And Kyle draws a picture of all the trapped new guardians breaking free of the book, which gives them the power to do exactly that. So they jump out, ready to fight, only when their rings start heading back towards them, they instead all end up on Krona's hand. So he can be his own rainbow. Aw, so pretty. He starts torturing Hal, but Hal continues on defiant, and for some reason his words seem to inspire Sinestro, who, rather unexpectedly, leaves in to save Hal. For his sudden bravery and devotion to saving the Green Team, Sinestro, the ex-Green Lantern, is once again inducted into the Green Lantern Corps. Yeah, that happens. The two greatest Green Lanterns of all time now fighting side by side, they quickly overwhelm and kill Krona. Once the Renegade Guardian dies in a fiery green explosion, the entities immediately eject themselves from the other Guardians, and the various color rings return to their proper owners. Hal wants Sinestro to remove the green ring he was just given, but the Guardians step in to say, yeah, he's not leaving, you are. And they kick Hal out of the core and strand him back on Earth. And the comic just immediately ends right there. Because the rest of the story will unfold in the pages of the new 52 Green Lantern comic, which I'll be looking at next. And that means that right now, it's time to get to the breakdown.
I guess if this channel has done anything for me personally, it's kind of changed my mind on Green Lantern. Particularly, in reading a bunch of comics leading up to writing this review, I really gained a newfound respect for how many of the ideas I've been crediting to Jeff John's reimagining of the series since Rebirth have actually pretty much been in the series all along. I'll admit it, you guys win. Green Lantern is pretty cool. There, I said it. I've always loved the addition of the other Lantern colors, and stories incorporating their use is just so much fun to me. But that all said, yeah, this story is not the series at its best. While there's a lot of cool ideas here, it feels very rushed to provide some kind of conclusion to the entire series so we can sweep into the new 52. And man, does a lot of the story feel like it's just there to fill pages. So I'm giving this series a recommendation level of medium. While reading this is very useful for setting up what's going on in the New 52, I'd still say it wouldn't be that bad to just skip it and move straight on to the next part. The Collected Edition gets 1. Blue Lantern Ring Following the rainbow spectrum of ratings I created during Blackest Night, that's, you know, a little bit better than average? It's 11 entire issues and has a pretty good sized alternate cover gallery in the back, so it's not exactly the most amazing collection I've seen from Green Lantern stories, but it's not bad. Thanks everybody for watching! I hope you guys are excited for some New 52 Green Lantern! I'm planning to cover basically all the New 52 Green Lantern comics this year, especially Core, New Guardians, and yes, Red Lanterns. I know there's a little bit more than that, but we'll have to see about those. Anyway, if you are excited, or you just enjoyed this video, or you're just a nice person who likes to do nice things for random people on the internet, and let's face it, you are, then make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, feel free to leave a comment below, and I hope to see you next time, right here in the Comic Cave.